Hi, this is Mike from Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To, and on today's video, we're going to show you how to use the USB BIOS flashback method to update the BIOS for 5000 series processors on your Gigabyte B550 Aorus Master. Keep watching to learn more. Okay, so there's a checklist of things you're going to need to perform this task. First of all, obviously, the motherboard itself, that'll be very helpful. You'll also need a USB drive. Now this one is a USB 3 drive. It's a 32 gig version. This seems for me to be one of the sweet spots. This is actually a SanDisk model. I'll put some details in the video description so you can get one of these if you want to. But you want to stick to below 32 gigs or 32 gigs or below. So 64 gigs don't seem to work very well because of the formatting. You will need to format this to FAT32. So obviously make sure you've got a drive which you are able to erase entirely because you can't have anything else left on the drive. Also, you will need a power supply. Now, we've just got a, a really basic power supply here. You will need one which has at least a four pin ETX connector for your CPU power and also a 24 pin connector for the main motherboard power. Also as well, if you can, it's really good to have something to actually put the motherboard on. In this particular instance, we're gonna use the motherboard box. That will do absolutely fine, but use whatever you've got available. You will also need access to the internet and the ability to plug in the USB stick to that device so you can download the BIOS and transfer it onto the stick itself. So obviously PC, Macintosh, those kinds of things are absolutely fine. As long as you can format the drive to FAT32, should be absolutely fine. So let's head over to the computer now and we'll start a process off. So the first thing we're gonna do is to put our USB stick into one of the ports on the PC. And as you can see, this is one I've used previously for flashing another BIOS. So what we wanna do is to format the drive. So we'll right click on the E drive, which is our USB stick and we'll choose format. If there's anything in the volume label, get rid of that. Make sure that capacities match up to what you've got, etc. FAT32, which is our default, so we will set it as default, and you can set the default allocation size. And that is pretty much it. So once we're done there, we can click on the start button. It will give you the warning saying that you're going to erase all the data on the disk. If you're happy, carry on and click OK. Once that's done, you'll get the format complete and just click on OK, and then we can close this window. So the next part of the task is to actually get the BIOS itself. So let's open up an internet browser and we'll just type in there. We'll type in B550 Aorus Master. And that's the version we've got there. I will put some links in the video description to save you all this. So don't worry if you're uh, not keeping up. So the version of the board we've got is the B550 Aorus Master, revision 1.0. Make sure that the revisions match up and you've got the right one for your board, otherwise things can go very wrong very quickly. Currently we are only on revision one of this board, but it looks that there will be an updated model, so yeah, do bear that in mind. Next part is to head over to the support section. And here we've got all the downloads for the board, etc., and also CPU support list. So if you're watching this video and you're not sure if you actually need to update your BIOS, then definitely worth checking on CPU support and checking which particular BIOS revision you need for your specific processor. If, for instance, you need one which is, uh, say for instance, the Ryzen 7 Pro 57G, then as long as you've got version F4 or higher, then you're absolutely fine. Anything above is good, anything below is bad in terms of BIOS revision numbers. So back to the downloads. Now if we scroll down a little bit further on here, we've got the BIOS, so click on that. And this is all our BIOS revisions. So this one starts off on BIOS revision F3. The board that I'm using at the moment currently is on BIOS F5, which I checked earlier on today. And we wanna use the latest processors, which is gonna be a 5000 series. And with all the uh, compatibility updates and all that taken care of. So we're gonna go ahead now and get the latest version, which is F13H. So click on the download button. This will open up a folder on your PC to see where you wanna save it to and I'm just gonna save this to the desktop. So hit save, obviously save it to wherever you want to, but for our purposes, that is a little bit easier. So now we can minimize this section. There is our zipped folder, so you can use either the Windows built-in tool or WinRAR, whichever you choose, and choose extract to. And this will give us a new folder. So we will double click on that folder. And as we look inside, here are the BIOSes and the readme files, etc., etc. What we need to do is rename this BIOS file, which is the 13H file. 
So click on view at the top and make sure that you have got file name extensions and hidden items shown. Otherwise these items may not appear. And then what we want to do is to click on the BAS file, delete everything that's there and type in gigabyte dot bin. Hit enter. It will give you a warning saying if you change the file name extension, it may become unusable. Are you sure you want to change it? And click on yes. Now what we need to do is to drag that file onto our USB stick. So you, however you choose to do it, I'm just going to drag and drop it into the USB drive. That's transferred across. And if we click on USB drive, we'll see now we've only got one file on here, which is the gigabyte.bin file. So that's all one good. Now we can close this down and now we can go over and start having some fun with the motherboard. So now we've got our USB stick with our BAS file loaded up. So the next thing to do is to actually physically connect that to the motherboard. So on the back of the motherboard, you've got various USB ports and there also is the USB BIOS flashback button, which will give you some close-ups of, so you can make sure you've got the right one. The actual port that you need to use is the one which is right next to it. And it doesn't actually say on the port itself, it does say BIOS. So stick that into there, make sure it's in. There is a little bit of a, a gotcha on these. Sometimes you have to make sure that you plug in the USB device before you attach the power otherwise it doesn't recognize the stick. So that can be something which can be a part of your kind of troubleshooting. Just make sure that you put it in first of all, and then you can hook up the rest of the power. Now for the power, we will need to connect up, as I said, a couple of different parts of our power supply. So the first one is going to be our 24 pin power connector, which is the usual 20 plus four. Yours may look slightly different with black cables, etc. This is just an older power supply, but essentially this is the connection you want for the main power. And the next one is our EPS connector. Now for this particular instance, I'm only using a four pin one. If you've got an eight pin one, that's absolutely fine. Generally you'll find on most modern power supplies, you'll have two of these kind of bunched together in a four plus four situation to make up eight pins. Absolutely fine as well. Really only needs a four pin just to get power to the board. Again, use whatever you've got available. So now we can hook up the power. So again, 24 pin. Gonna stick that one into this edge connector. Just this one here. Make sure that's firmly in place. Next one is our EPS connector, which goes into the top of the board. Put it into the eight pin connector and put it towards the right hand side and you should find it fits in with almost zero resistance. If it doesn't want to fit, you're putting it in the wrong slot. So try another slot. So with that all connected up, now we need some power for the actual power supply. So I've got a handy kettle lead here, which I'll just plug into the back of the power supply. And the next thing is the, uh, the scary part. So what we want to do is press the BIOS flashback button for just a couple of seconds. There is actually an LED, which is just below that light, which sometimes is a little bit difficult to see, but we'll try and give you some close-ups of that. When we do this, the board should light up your power supply should start spinning, etc. If you've got a USB stick, which has an LED in it as well, you may find that flashes as well. The whole process should last approximately five to six minutes. If for some reason it flashes quickly and then stops, then you've done something wrong or the USB drive isn't compatible. So either try another USB drive, try renaming the file, make sure that's all correct. You may have formatted the drive incorrectly, those kinds of things. So those are some of your troubleshooting tasks which you can go through, but essentially, once you press the button for, just press and hold it for like the count of two, the board should spring to life, fans should start going. When the process is finished, the board itself will completely shut down. So that tells you that the job is done. And in theory, that should be your BIOS flash. So let's go ahead and do it. So we're just gonna find our BIOS flashback button, which is just here. Press it in for the count of two. So one, two, and release. And you should see, I can just about see from behind here through the IO shield, there is the flashing amber colored light on the motherboard. So that is going to be starting the process. You can probably just about make it out there. So we'll wait a little while whilst it's reading. Also, you may find that your debug LEDs or your debug digital display and the LED there may also start as well. So just be patient. It's currently flashing. So we'll just wait and let it do its thing. And there we go. So that after it's actually read the file from the USB, then the board springs into life and we've got our zero zero indicator on the motherboard and you can see hopefully you can see the led is now flashing a little bit slower as it's actually programming the bios 
Also, because we don't have a CPU connected, we've also got the CPU diagnostic lights on our four-way D-LED. So again, just be patient, let it do its thing. Power supply is on now as well. So on these boards, it's actually really straightforward and simple. Actually, some of the easiest boards, Gigabyte versions, you know exactly what's going on because obviously it's lit up slightly, all that kind of stuff. So it gives you some kind of visual representation that things are actually happening as they're supposed to. So we'll let this carry on, let it do the rest of its task, and uh, we'll be back when it's finished. Okay, so there you go. The, uh, the motherboard has powered down, all the lights are turned off, and the power supply is turned off. So that is it. Essentially, all we need to do now is to remove our USB drive, disconnect the power cables, and we're done. Now is time for the fun part, actually building up the system and testing it to make sure it all works. So hopefully this video has been useful to you. If it has, don't forget to give the video a thumbs up and obviously you can subscribe if you want to see more content like this. If you want to help out the channel, then feel free to pick up some of our merch from the links down below the video. But in the meantime, I've been Mike. This is Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To, and hopefully we'll catch you in the very next video. Thanks for watching.